Hello everyone, my name is Hilmar and I'm the founder and CEO of Archeo and with me today is Johan, our VP of product. Hi everyone. Last year we showed Archeo for the very first time live on stage at Next Build in London. And I have to say it's great to be back, even though we're meeting virtually this time. Now at Archeo, our mission is to simplify the architectural design process to make it more effective and collaborative than possible with today's flat screen design tools. We basically want to give designers superpowers. Last year, we made a lot of improvements to the Archeo beta. One of the areas we've been focusing on is integrating Archeo seamlessly into the design process. For the first time, it's now possible to load a Revit model into a shared virtual space and explore new design options together, then export these results back to native Revit families. We also focused on making Archeo available to anyone, no matter what device you're using, so anyone can join a design session, make new design suggestions, whether using a VR headset, desktop PC, tablet, or even a phone. The COVID-19 crisis has highlighted the need for better collaborative design tools, as design firms have been trying to stay productive while working remotely. Later in this presentation, we'll be doing a virtual interview with Ernesto Pacheco from Canon Design in the US. Ernesto is one of our earliest beta testers, and he's going to share with us how Canon Design has been using Archeo to successfully collaborate and interact with clients while working remotely. But first, let's see how Archeo works. Johan, are you ready? Yes, let's get started. Hi, welcome to Archeo, everyone. Let's start by talking a little bit about why we are making Archeo. The creative process in architecture is traditionally done using sketches and simple foam models. Nowadays, most of our design work is done in 3D, but we still use 2D screens for creating these models. We now have technologies to experience our design in 3D using virtual and augmented reality. But when we want to try out something new, we need to go back to our 2D devices. With Archeo, we want to reimagine what the architectural design process can be like when we're not bound by 2D devices, where you can use your hands to model in 3D, just like working with physical models that can be picked up, slid, and glued together. We see Archeo as a 3D tracing paper, where you can quickly prototype ideas together on existing 2D or 3D content like Rhino, SketchUp, and Revit models. Since last year, we worked on a close integration with Autodesk Revit, making it easier to load your latest designs and draw new suggestions on top of this using volumes or sketches. These changes will then be exported back to native Revit geometry so you can continue your work in Revit. But the fun part is that this can be done fully collaborative, so I can invite others to join me and explore ideas from any skill. Hi Katrin, could you please make that tower a bit wider? I can also work on the same object from human skill. Let's move that tower a bit to the back like this. Context is important when exploring your designs. In Archeo, you can load your site with the built-in map feature and automatically generate 3D buildings from OpenStreetMaps data. Let's move on to the plot next door and show how Archeo works. Creating shapes is simple. I just pull them out of the ground in one gesture. To create solid shapes, I pull up. To create voids, I push down into the underlying shape. As I work, you can see how shapes snap to the edges. Now the best part is this can all be done fully collaborative, so Hilmar can make edits on the building at the same time. Sure, let me adjust just a few things over here. As I pick up shapes, they also align with other shapes, making working with Archeo even easier than physical model making. Okay, I'll adjust the height of the building a bit. Why don't you bring in a real Revit model now, Johan? Sure, let's get to Revit. In Revit, we can easily export a 3D scene to Archeo using our Revit plugin. 
This allows us to select the level of detail to reduce the amount of polygons for working with models on mobile devices like the Oculus Quest or phones and tablets. Once the model has been successfully exported, you can bring it into Archeo. We also support importing of images, program requirements and other 3D models. Ok, let's get rid of this building and bring in the Revit model. Here you can see the model available in my library that will be placed on the table using the Revit North coordinates. Once we have imported the Revit model, we can sketch on top of it and explore some new design options. How about trying to add an extension to the building, maybe over here? Sure, let me work on that. It's possible to work in any scale in Archeo. When you want to do more detailed work, you just scale down to a more comfortable size. Why don't we add some color to the entrance? And maybe skew it a bit to make it more interesting. OK, let's go inside. I think we should add a door here. Let me sketch the opening, so we don't forget to add one once everything is loaded back to Revit. We want to create a wall here to separate the lobby from the restaurant. Ilmar, can you maybe get started with the reception desk? Sure, how about this size? Ok, let me move it a bit. How about we add a logo on the wall here? And maybe some chairs over here? Let's move into the side so they're not in the way. We are now back outside again, where I can experience the design at human scale while Hilmar creates a new tower. I can also move things around by simply pointing at them. One of the main features of Archeo is that you can join a design meeting even if you don't have a VR headset, as Archeo also works on desktop PCs, phones and tablets. Here you can see how a user with an iPad can see everything that's going on inside the meeting as you sculpt the new tower a little bit. Another key feature is that you can add program tags to individual floors and immediately see total area sizes and how close you are to meeting your program requirements. You can also see this updating on the iPad as the tower is being worked on and even added program tags on the iPad as well. On the iPad, they can easily navigate around the model and communicate design suggestions with the users inside VR by sketching on the model itself. Note how the area tool changes as Hilmar edits the tower in VR. Design options are another powerful feature of Archeo. Simply make a duplicate of the model Try out some other IDs and toggle back when you're done. It is even possible to create entire towers, move and rotate them around from a non-VR device. And by placing the model on a table in AR using a phone or tablet, you can see everyone working in the scene and even sketch or model something in AR. Let's jump to human scale inside the building and check out the view. How about we create a new meeting space here? Creating spaces while experiencing them from human scale is really powerful, and these validated spatial objects can be used again once loaded back as native rabbit geometry. And of course, we can play with the time of day to get a feel for how the light will flow into that new meeting space. Once you're happy with your design, we can export the design options to 3D or native Autodesk Revit. 
Once in Revit, we can use the Archeo plugin to import that scene to generic models or mass families that can be used as a base for facade. You can choose what materials from Archeo to import, and if you want to delete the previous import when loading new proposals. Everything created or loaded in Archeo will be converted to Revit objects aligned with the original model. The volumes in Archeo get converted to native geometry, and Archeo props like trees, people, and furniture get created as native Revit families. Also, the iPad sketches get loaded, and the program data and materials are contained in the geometry. Here we can see the new entrance that can directly be used as a design reference, including a reception and sketch for the missing door. Even custom imported 3D objects, like this chair, will be converted to native Revit families, so they can easily be updated or replaced by other families in your library. Welcome back to Archeo. Joining us today is Ernesto Pachenko from Canon Design. Ernesto is one of our early beta users, and we're going to have a small chat. So Ernesto, great to have you here with us inside Arqueo. Thanks, Inmar. Uh, this is amazing. This, uh, this is my first virtual interview, so thanks for the invite. No problem. So can you start by maybe telling us a little bit about Canon Design and your work? Sure. Uh, so Canon Design is a global design company. Uh, we, we are um, you know, architects, engineers, and industry strategies. Uh, we have over uh, 20 offices across uh, the nation, uh, one in Canada and one in uh, India and Mumbai. Uh, we are about 1,000 employees. Uh, so yeah, we we get to, to do a lot of uh, cool work uh, around the, the country and the world. Excellent. So tell me, I'm curious, when did you first get started with using VR for architecture? Sure. So. Uh, my first try was probably four years ago. Uh, we were exploring, um, you know, how we can implement tools uh, for uh, mock-ups, right? So we do a lot of uh, patient room mock-ups, and we were trying to find a way to cut the cost on the creation of these mock-ups by introducing some virtual tools. So we looked into Unity 3D and Unreal Engine, uh, you know, started like testing some some things to see if um, you know our coworkers could use this on the field and, and we found some really cool interesting ideas out of that uh, that was our first uh, actually try on vr and then from there it just exploded uh, we started having um, other other projects coming with ideas on you know how we can implement you know walkthroughs and you know interactive you know voiceover um, um, i guess explorations of campuses and things like that so it's, it's been great so tell me, this uh, this year has obviously been very unusual for everybody. Um, can you talk about how the the COVID nineteen crisis has kind of impacted uh, the work you do at Canon Design? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so you know, it, it is funny. Uh, right before quarantine started in the U.S., we we were tasked with uh, a very important interview uh, for a project pursuit, uh, and one of the one of the things that we right away started looking into is how, how do we communicate uh, with our client virtually? Uh, we usually, you know, 3D print, um, you know, objects or, you know, put together physical models that we bring to the interview uh, with the client. So this time around, we were, you know, kind of scrambling, trying to find a way to implement something like that virtually. And we have been using Archeo for the last two years. Um, so we had a good idea of how to put together these type of presentations, but we have never attempted uh, to do anything like this with a client, uh, especially not through you know Zoom or GoToMeeting. Uh, so one of the things that we have seen uh, with COVID is uh, the need for these type of tools, a way to you know virtually interact with the client, um, and, you know, try to spark their imagination when it comes to uh, their project and the ideas that we bring to the table. Uh, so we have been lucky enough that we were kind of ready. We had been prepping for this. Uh, the transition was uh, smooth uh, for the most part. We didn't have any major issues with technology. Uh, we use virtual desktops anyway, so we, we connect from different um, you know states to different offices uh, with ease. Uh, so it has been 
uh, uh, kind of like a, a natural um, way to walk into virtual presentations with uh, Canon. Excellent. And you brought some examples with you that you can take a look at, right? Sure. One of the things that we find very interesting with Archeo is that uh, physic physicality, I guess, of interacting with, uh, you know, the pieces that you bring into uh, the VR space. Uh, it feels more like you're uh, actually working with a physical model and 3D printed uh, pieces. Uh, you, you can actually remove things, uh, plan for, you know, having sections to be uh, revealed. And it's very, very fun and, and exciting for the client to see this. Uh, it has been eye-opening for most of them. Uh, so Arcade has definitely been that wall factor that we uh, have been looking for, uh, especially now during COVID uh, times. Uh, how do you make it fun for, for the client to enjoy something that is uh, totally, um, I guess, uh, away from how we used to work with them? Uh, so it's definitely, uh, you know, sparking their imagination and, and, you know, making sure that they understand the process a little bit more. They have questions about, you know, the 3D models now. So it's, it's, it's creating this new bridge between the client and, you know, the work that we do. Uh, on this other slide, um, so this is, uh, this is a really cool slide, I think. Um, we use RQ for the first time two years uh, on a client presentation. We actually did it on site. Uh, we, we brought a laptop and a headset uh, to work with, and this was the actual first time we 3D model in VR in front of a client. And uh, on this other slide, uh, we can see this is just a screenshot of a uh, virtual presentation. We actually won this, this project. Uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, kind of designers from, you know, Chicago and New York City and other offices just joining in. And we actually use Archeo in this um, presentation. We had a designer using a tablet. Uh, he was um, sketching and, you know, talking about the, the design while orbiting uh, inside the, the virtual space. And I was right there, uh, you know, with a VR headset, uh, helping him navigate and, you know, move things uh, in the virtual space. So if you want, we can actually jump into this uh, presentation quickly and you can see how it feels. All right, so uh, here we are. This is uh, the Metro Health project. Uh, we won this project during quarantine, which was very exciting. Uh, we decided to actually create a, a fun activity within uh, this uh, session. Uh, we, we were toying with the idea of creating, um, you know, some type of, um, you know, Model A and Model B uh, and switch between them. But then we decided uh, it would be fun to just uh, have have a section uh, that you could remove uh, during the presentation. And this section, you know, was important just because, you know, it was showing the, displaying the connection between the existing building and the new proposed tower and also the connection between the new green spaces that we were proposing uh, back to the, the existing green spaces and how that will affect, uh, you know, employees and also patients uh, going from one tower to the other. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Archeo is definitely uh, helping to democratize uh, this type of uh, opportunities. Uh, it's, it's allowing kind of designers to um, utilize, you know, whatever tool they want to use to create a model and then just easily bring in uh, those models into a VR, VR space um, that is more conceptual, is more clean. Uh, it goes down to, uh, you know, talking about design and it's, it, it doesn't really get, a, you know, in, a way, in the way of presenting uh, our ideas or the design intent uh, that we want to get across to our clients. Well, the future is definitely very interesting, and um, I just have to say that we're glad to be on this this journey together with you. And uh, well, definitely, yeah. yeah, it's been uh, awesome to have you here, and you know, thanks for dropping by, and hopefully, we'll see you back again soon. For sure, thank you so much. So that brings us to the end of the presentation. As you can see, virtual reality offers many unique advantages when it comes to working together, not only remotely, but also when in the same location. The sense of presence of being together in a model with other people and being able to intuitively understand design options is something you simply don't get with today's flat screen design tools. 
You can also use Arcio to brainstorm design ideas together, either from scratch or by working on top of existing models from design tools like Revit or Rhino. You can work on urban skill for massing or try out a new ID for a lobby using a VR headset or your phone. We'd like to thank Ernesto for joining us for this presentation and the Next Build team for inviting us to speak again. As we said last year, we're just getting started. Immersive technologies like virtual and augmented reality are advancing rapidly. Soon you'll even be able to model inside the Archie with your bare hands, no controllers needed. And there's lots more to come, so stay tuned. We'd love to get your feedback on the Archeo beta, so please sign up at archeo.is and let us know what you think. Thanks. Thanks.